All right, let's take a look. The suggestion we got for angles to use, remember there are a lot of different angles you could have used, but the suggestion that was given uh, here was 150 and 45, and I think that's what a lot of you wrote down right away because you got those two numbers and said, oh, sure, why not? That works. And so those are what you wrote down, which means, though, we do have to take a look. 45 is the same 45 we've had the whole time, so nothing big there, but how about 150? Yeah, we got a slight problem there. 150 is here. We do have a negative involved. Okay. Uh, for sine, it goes what? Sine of the first one, right? So sine of 150 times cosine of 45. Plus or minus, which one? Plus. Yeah, because it is sine. It was plus, so stay with plus. Okay. And so then you basically take cosine of the first one, because I haven't done that yet, and sine of the second one. So sine of 150, one half. Square root of 2 over 2 plus negative square root of 3 over 2. So this becomes, oh, yep, over 4. Well, should we just put minus? This is a 4, my bad. Now, do you agree that the square root of 6 is a bigger square root than the square root of 2? So this final answer would end up negative, agreed? If I actually found that decimal, does it make sense that this answer would be negative? Why? Yeah, it's, it's right down here. It's in quadrant 3 because we're talking about 195. So it's negative, negative, right, for both values? So if I'm talking about sine, it better be negative. So it makes sense. Now, I will tell you the cosine answer because I think some people actually went and did it. For those that are wondering, cosine of 195 ends up being both parts are negative. And the reason I actually wanted to do both of those was to make a point. And I will ask you a question and I will tell you this should be a pretty good challenge because the last class got it right. So. It's a challenge to you to do the same. On here, I have a sine of 195 circled in green, cosine of 195 circled in blue. If I took the one circled in green and squared it, not something I actually expect you to do in your head, but if I were to take that value, circled in green and squared it, took the value in blue, squared it, and added them together, what would I get? One. Because sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And it's because they're the same angle. It's cosine of 195 squared, sine of 195 squared. You add them together, you get one because it's a Pythagorean identity. As long as the angle is the same. You can't do cosine of 195 and then sine of 22. Square them both and add them together. That doesn't have to be one. But here it does. Very good. So that's if you're given the angles. That's how you would do it. What if you're not? I'm not given angle X or angle Y, but I am given information about X and Y. And once again, I want these to be exact. I don't want these to be some rounded thing. Because let's face it, we all know over here that to find angle X, all I have to do is take arc sine of four-fifths. But that would be rounded. I don't want that. And to find Y, all I would do is take arc cosine of negative three-fifths. But once again, would be rounded. Don't want that. So what we're going to do, it tells us we have angle X and Y, and they are in the first and second quadrant, respectively. What does respectively mean in this case? In this case, it means basically that X is in the first and Y is in the second. They follow the same order is what that means. So I'm going to draw a picture for X, and I know it's in the first quadrant. There's angle X right there. Sign being four-fifths, does that mean I can put the four and the five wherever I feel like it? No. Five's where? Four is where? What can you tell me? Yeah, four is its opposite over hypotenuse, correct? For sine, right? So what's the other number? Yeah, I normally stick with the triples. You don't have to. I could have just terrible radicals involved here. 
Yeah, we'll do a picture for angle Y in green. We'll kind of keep things separate with colors. Can I draw angle Y wherever I feel like it? Any quadrant? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I better draw it in two because that's what it says it is. So in other words, I'm taking an angle somewhere between 0 and 90, and I'm going to add it to an angle that's from 90 to 180, right? So it's going to get pretty big, right? Possibly. Because I could add, even if I add the smallest, 91 degrees and 1 degree, I'm at 92 degrees, right, if I add those two. And so here we got cosine. So positive or negative 4 on that one? Because it's going up. Very good. So that green picture, anything that deals with Y, that green picture is going to take care of it for us. And anything with angle X, the blue one, will take care of it for us. Again, do I know that angle? Nope. I don't know that one either. I'm going to find the sine value if I add those two unknown angles together. And I have no clue what they are. Stein's little formula says, I believe, to take the sine of the first one, which is X here, times the cosine of the second one, right? What about the sine in sine? It stays the same, so the plus comes on down. And then cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. Do you agree that's what it says? Nice thing is, is I know half that information already. It was given to me, specifically. I don't have to look at the unit circle for these things. I look at my picture that I have. Sine of x, do I know what that is? Yeah, it says right here that sine of x is four-fifths. Now here's the most common thing people do wrong. They write sine of four-fifths. No, sine of x just gets replaced with four-fifths. Sine of x is four-fifths, replace it. Not sine of four-fifths. It is just four-fifths completely. Do I know cosine of y? What is it? So is it cosine of negative three-fifths that I write down or just negative three-fifths? Yeah, you just write it down. You replace it. It's right here. Just replace it with negative three-fifths. So those two I knew already. So now you're saying, well, why did we draw the pictures there? Yeah, we don't know the other two yet, but we have a picture that will give them to me. Now, for cosine of x, which picture should I look at, the blue or the green? Why? Yeah, because it's the x picture, and I'm asking for cosine here. And cosine there is? Three. Yeah, Jason over hypotenuse, the three-fifths. And how about sine of y? Look at the blue or the green. Blue or green? Green, because it's y. And sine is? Yeah, opposite over hypotenuse. And so it's four-fifths. You remember when I told you when dealing with the unit circle, a lot of times you'll get a common denominator? A lot of times here you won't. I was nice. I gave you the same Pythagorean triple. Obviously, there's a lot of them out there. They might not always be the same, so your denominator might change a little bit. But here, I was pretty nice, and there was a reason I did this one. So I put these two together. I can put those two together. Order of operations. This is 25th plus 25th. This next question is going to be hugely important in something that I never understood in high school. But I could sit there and do this all day. And never had a clue, never would have thought of, and was never asked. You should be able to right now tell me exactly where x plus y ends up. Do you know x and y? No. But you can tell me exactly where it ends up. And you should be able to. But I never thought of it. You know it's a first quadrant angle over here that I'm adding to a second quadrant angle. And I know that the sine value of those two added together is 0. I must have ended up at 180 because that's the only place. Sine equals 0. And it would be two angles like that added together. It has to be 180. Okay. Again, do I know what they are? It could have been 89 and 91 for all I know, but it got me to 180. Okay. Again, just put a number out here then. Give me a number in the first quadrant. 45. Is that right for this one? No, because that's not where the picture would be. But 45 is a first quadrant angle, agreed? This one's a second quadrant angle. Give me one. And probably 135 would be the best answer. 45 plus 135 is? 
we're saying we added two angles together, then took sine. I know sine of that angle is zero. Either there or there, correct? Sine would be zero. And if I took one of these angles and added one of those angles, well, am I going to end up at that one? No, I'm not going to end up at that one. I must have ended up at that one. Right, you'd have to kind of get go backwards or something, or yeah, there's no way you would get back to zero. Okay? Because you added two angles, you had no clue, but you know where they ended up now because you're smart. But again, I would have never thought of that. We'll do one more, but I'm guessing you'll, whoa. And then I'll leave you to your own devices for the next one. It's the same pictures. But what's different? Goodness gracious. Anybody? What's different? And it's minus. So we're taking a, and now look how it's, I'm taking a first quadrant angle and I'm subtracting a second quadrant angle. So maybe I'm taking 45 minus 135. Do you agree that the second number here is going to be bigger for these angles? So well, that should be interesting. Cosine's little formula, I believe, says to take cosine of the first one times cosine of the second one. It's the formula on the other side. And then it is minus, and that little formula on the other side tells you to yeah, switch the signs, right? This becomes then plus, and then sine of first one, sine of second one. Do I already know some of those? Yes. Are there some I wouldn't have known without the pictures? Yes. So if I'm looking for cosine of x, which picture should I probably look at? Yeah, the one with x in it. And what's cosine there? It's 3 fifths. Cosine of y, negative 3 fifths, very good. Are you sure it's 4 fifths? Yep. Did you already do this one? It's doing good, all right. So I can find that one, can find that one. Once again, the only reason that they're coming up with those same common denominators is I kept the triple the same. Now, you know what? A lot of people, a lot of people subtract that one wrong. It is not the first time in history that that got subtracted wrong, so don't feel bad. Uh, I've heard a lot of strange answers for that numerator on this one. Uh, it's 7 over 25.